Snapcaster Mage. So he's kind of a walkie right. four-color control deck that even has a copy of Gideon Jura in it. Gideon Jura, missed one Gideon Jura, one Mystical Teachings, two Anticipates, one Logic Knot, one Kitchen Sink, one... No, I love this. Yeah, this is it, good. It's all there. He used the entire spells column. He used the entire sideboard column, too. He has all a 15, 15 card sideboard. Yeah. All one right. Of, all one ofs. I can get behind it. Both these players, six and two. Barish starting off with a Noble Hierarch off of a Breeding Pool, while Sukenic just will play an Arid Mesa. So one thing, this is a matchup which I would think is good for Jonathan. Now, that's, to be fair, this guy's sustained chair. I forget to that in a second, because that's going to be harder to deal with. Yeah. He has a lot of one man removal. If you look at the only, he has four Snapcaster Mages, four Path to Exiles, four Lightning Bolts, and then two Lightning Helix, two Electrolyze. That base is one of the strongest things you can do against Infect. Yeah, but does he have something that he can do against the Geist? No, the Geist came straight out of the sideboard as a four of for Aaron and that one's gonna hurt. He can use Snapcaster Mage to ambush the, vi the Geist. Well, this is true. But this is... Now go Noble Hierarch makes that harder. Noble Hierarch is exalted. Also, this deck, in fact, is a deck full of pump spells. Right. And you know, a card like Apostle's Blessing could be hiding out over there. So the likelihood of this actually working seems kind of low yeah, as I far as Sukenic trying to trade with that card. I believe if Sukenic can stay alive, he has a copy of Supreme Verdict in hand. So that should work just fine. But Geist on the play deals chunks in seven a turn. And that, so Sukenic won't have the turns to get there. This is an interesting bob and weave strategy by Barrett, who you mentioned he does like small creatures. He does like pump spells. Gather Courage, one of his favorite pump spells when he's playing standard. And now he's got Geist of St. Trapped out of the sideboard in combination with pump spells could be very, very deadly. And you see his hand. His hand is not all that impressive at this point. There's a couple of lands over there. Gataxian Probe. Looks like a Vines of the Vastwood. So he's kind of all in on this Geist plan of taking Sukenic by surprise. There is the Probe, so we'll see what Jonathan is working with right now. There's a Mana Leak, a Lightning Helix. You mentioned the Supreme Verdict, Electrolyze, Cryptic Command, Steam Vents, and a Godless Shrine. Which looks souls. a little weird. Lingering but Souls in the Lingering back. Souls. Yep. So can Jonathan make his way to Supreme Verdict? That, that's what this game's going to be about. He does have the necessary lands to get there. So he has Mana Leak for this turn. He has Lightning Helix for, or Electrolyze for next turn. Mutagenic Growth, the draw there for Barish. I think Jonathan's going to do it. I think he'll get to turn four to cast Verdict. We'll see what the light total will be when he gets there, but I think he'll get there. Then he'll have to weather this double Ink Moth Nexus, so he'd like to not use things like Electrolyze right away. Yeah. Barrett is going to fire up, it looks like. He's going to cover both halves. A little Infect like damage this. and a little, uh, a little regular damage. There's a trigger from the Geist. The Angel will come in. We know Sukenic's hand. He'll have no response to any of this. So some damage will be dealt. Six regular, one Infect. There might be a follow-up of like a Glistener Elf here. Maybe. There won't be. Barrett will just pass the turn back. So he has one poison on him. And that Aaron getting the poison on there because he kind of, he knows that the Supreme Verdict is going to happen. So he's setting up some infect damage so that his when he has to restart and race post-verdict, he'll have less ground to cover. So can can analyze some things. Remember, we saw him make the top eight of the Baltimore Modern Open with this wonky four-color control deck. It looks strange when you look at it on paper. The one Mystical Teachings, the one Sphinx's Revelation, the Gideon, only two copies of Cryptic Command. But it's worked for him. So he'll play his defense, tapped, and pass the turn back. Spell Pierce the draw here for Barish. Doesn't have a role against Supreme Verdict, but will be good against other spells. Now we're going to see him fire up Ink Moth next again. Let's make it two of them coming into the red zone. The Angel, the Geist, the two Nexuses. Yeah, and I really like how he's just, that Jataxian probe really helped Aaron change gears here. It's yeah, super important. He's not getting too aggressive. 
no pump spells just yet. Just going to pass the turn. Snapcaster the mage. Snapcaster mage, excuse me, the draw here for Sukene. So see if he wants to use these cards. He's going to the Goblet Shrine in his hand. That's upside down. That might be entering the battlefield. And it will untapped. So he's going to go down to five. There's the verdict to clean things up. It's interesting. Sukenic actually plays with his cards. It look, looks like he plays them face upside down in his hand. A little, yeah, it's a little weird. Only some of them upside down. I think what he's doing is he's tracking which cards Aaron knows about from the probe and which cards Aaron does not know about. That makes the sense. upside down cards are things that Aaron has seen. Okay, that actually makes sense. Barrett is firing up here. Looks like he's searching up a temple garden to play Vines of the Vastwood and now Mutagenic Growth. So an attack there for one, plus four is five, Beautiful. plus Mutagenic Growth is seven. Seven plus three is ten. That's the magic number for our man in the hat. Naren and Barrett just tie things up here against Jonathan Sukenik. Infect and four-color control getting ready for a third game. That was well played there by Barrett. I mean, that's a taxing probe. Just one air in the game. Yeah. Knowing that he can shift gears, has to get a little bit of regular damage in, get a little bit of infect damage in. He was able to do that. But now, one thing to keep in mind is Sukenik now knows about Geisting Trap. So we'll see how that changes things for his sideboard. Uh, you've got the 15 one in front of you, so I'll let you take a look at that. All right, well, he's boarded in the Anger of the Gods already. We saw him draw at that hand. Um, looking at the other cards, he has Crackling Doom, Counter Flux. I like Crack. Maybe he goes for Crackling Doom because it can take care of a Geist of St. Trapped. Um, other cards, I'll just run through some of the things he has. Wear Terror, Timely Reinforcements, Rending Volley, Negate, Core Firewalker, Is It Staticaster, Isochron Scepter. I imagine that the Staticaster is already in. That card seems fantastic against Infect. I actually like Isochron Scepter in this matchup, which, you know, is going to go way back to a card that used to see a lot of play in Old Extended, which was the precursor to Modern. Yep. Um, really, you don't see it too much because of cards like Abrupt Decay just can make an Isochron Scepter look foolish. But against a deck like this, you know, against the Infect, putting something like Path to Exile on an Isochron Scepter seems like a great line. Many people who are watching probably don't know the term Scepter Chant, which makes me sad. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a fun one. Yeah, the old Scepter Orm's Chant control deck where your opponent will not get to play any spells anymore. Or, or attack. attack, yeah, if you kick it. Uh, Barrett's sideboard, he's got four guys to St. Draft, a Spell Sky, two Path to Exile, a Dryad Arbor, two Spell Pierce, a Twisted Image, two Nature's Claims, and two Dispels. Uh, we saw Geist in the last game. Uh, we also saw Spell Pierce, Spell Pierce, excuse me, as well. Wouldn't be surprised to see Dispel come in the deck, too. So those are the options there for Barrich. And we'll watch these players play game number three in just a moment. But very quickly, we will talk about Patrick Chapin, the Hall of Famer, and his two books, an X-Level Library for all skill levels. Uh, they're both now available in paper book and e-book. So if you want to get your hands on one of these two fantastic books and I own both of them. I certainly can't recommend them. StarCityGames.com slash Next Level for more information about Next Level deck building and Next Level Magic. Again, available in both paper book, paperback excuse me, and ebook. Yeah, I've had these on ebook. I actually just got a copy of Next Level Deck Building this weekend, planning to read it on my plane flight home. Really looking forward to it. These things are great. Game number three is where we're going. We already saw Chris Van Meter get a W with Amulet Bloom. He's 9-0. One of these players is going to be 7-2. Have about 15 minutes to go here in round number nine. Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, Patrick Sullivan will be joining us beginning round at number 11. We've got four rounds of modern and then four rounds of standard here at our season two invitational. At the conclusion of our last round of standard, we will be cutting to a top eight. Chris Van Meter in prime position to go there. Josh Ravitch, you can see behind Aaron Barrich. He's seven and one. Kevin Gerhardt, a local player from Cleveland, Ohio. He's eight and oh as well. A lot of big names here among our 665. Just a little over 200 making day two. And eventually, we'll only have eight that'll play tomorrow morning. Could be one of these two guys. Looks like Sukenik's going to take a mulligan. We'll see if Barrett is happy with his hand. He's not. Very quick mulligan for him as well. So what you have to remember is there are cards like Mana Leak that Sukenik will have access to game two or game three either on the play that will help really get by that Geist of St. Trapped. The fact that Aaron was on the play and had the Geist off Noble Hierarch combined is very problematic for Jonathan's deck. Yeah. That's a draw that really took Sekenic by surprise. Yes, he had his one of Supreme Verdict to be able to clean that up, but it, without that Supreme Verdict, he's probably just dead for that draw. Right. And it does make you wonder, when you think about Infect, you think about Tom Ross, obviously. You know, we've never seen Geist of St. Traft in the sideboard of these decks, so being able to throw him through a loop in combination with pump spells could be very, very good for Aaron. 
and probably has been good for him so far over the course of this weekend. Certainly nice to see Sukenik back here in the feature match area. Haven't seen a ton of him in the Magic community. He used to play a lot on the early days of the Open Series to a lot of success. Pretty young guy. Same thing we said for Barrett. We see him a lot when we go to Dallas. Yeah, Barrett's from the Louisiana area, yep. I believe. It was a heck of a trek for him to even get out here. Both players are going to take a look at six cards now. Geist is saying trapped among the cards that Eric has found, but he is going to mulligan yet again. He has not found what he's looking for. Don't think he found a land in that one. Yeah. Yeah, no lands in that hand. He will be on the draw. Which is nice. And he does have a card that I don't think we find a lot of times in Infect, which is Serum Visions. He's got mm -hmm. four of those. That's kind of something that's standing out to me, and then four copies of Gataxian Probe. So he does have some ways to try to maybe draw some cards and work his way out of this. Uh, eight Infect creatures and Glistener Elf and Blighted Agent. Can't forget about Ink Moth Nexus as well. There are four of those. That's something you have to like. Aaron has this very distinct style of deck that he likes to play. He very much likes these low to the ground creature decks with a lot of combat tricks and explosiveness and takes his own build on nearly all of these decks. So that's something like this or, you know, a, we've seen him in the past play things like Boros Charm decks, Jund Aggro decks, and that's the kind of style he'll generally be playing. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing I actually kind of like about Aaron is he kind of does have his own style. When I, when I think of Aaron Barrett, the one thing I think of is Gather Courage. That's yeah. like the top card on the list when I think about him. He loves that card in standard. He took a lot of people by surprise with it at an open that we had in Richmond. Here's a Gataxian probe. We'll see what's in Sukenic Sand. He's got a lightning bolt, a copy of Electrolyze, two steam vents over there. Yeah, Pretty good Path hand. to exile the remaining card. Yep. So these, I mean, Path, Bolt, Electrolyze, and then three lands. That's a very good hand against Aaron. It's weak to guys to St. Draft, but good against pretty much everything else Aaron can do. Aaron does have another copy of a taxi probe in hand. Maybe he'll play it, maybe he won't. Got a couple of lands and ink bomb nexus over there, too. Mutagenic growth, the green card in hand. This is going to be a tough hand for him to beat, though. It, it really is going to revolve around guys if he can draw it. He'll start with a breeding pool. He'll enter the battlefield tapped. Sukenic with the steam vents. He'll pass his turn back. And you actually did a really nice job of identifying why he does play with the cards upside down. That's actually unique. I've never seen anyone do that. No, it's really neat. I, I It's something I haven't noticed. You see now he flips around the Glacial Fortress to match the other ones now yeah. that Farage is Jatax and probing again. Sukenic playing with the cards upside down. Those are the cards that Barrage knows about. So this one he'll draw right side up. Yeah, it's a really good heuristic to use because a lot of times, you know, you want to play out the cards that Aaron knows about. Crackling Doom was the draw. Jeez. We did talk about that. I mean, I, th I wonder whether that one came in the out, of out from the sideboard yep. after he saw a Geist of St. Traft. Here comes Inkmoth Nexus. Coming on in. Sukenic not going to make a move. He may make a move on end step after, uh, on it. He just doesn't want Aaron to get him with a pump spell when he goes to kill it. And that's a trick is you don't want to fight them in combat. That's when their pump spells are the best. You want to fight them at the end of turn, where their pump spells will save the creature, maybe, but you're not taking more infect damage. So, for example, with this Electrolyze, even if Aaron uses a pump spell to save it, it's still a two-for-one from Jonathan's side. He'll either get a pump spell or an Ink Moth Nexus from Aaron, and it will cost him nothing as Electrolyze draws a card. Yep. And that is certainly where you want to be. Aaron is going to use a Mutagenic Growth here. He'll pay Phyrexian Mana, which is two life. That's fine. That's one less of those that Sukenic has to worry about, and he gets to draw a card. I believe it was a copy of Supreme Verdict. Blue to Delta the draw now, so Crackling Doom is online. The Crackling Doom is an interesting inclusion. I like that a lot. You can mystical teachings for that thing. <laughs> it's good against, I mean, just to have a one of there, I mean, I imagine it gains them so much value in matchups like, like Hexproof, for example. Yeah. Also, who's playing, I mean, I'm oh, saying that you can really play around playing it. No, who's oh, playing who's around playing? Crackling Doom? Right. I, you, know? you don't see much of it in modern. There are a few people playing Hexproof this weekend. The old yep. green-white Hexproof oh, yeah. Slippery Boggle deck. No, that deck has really died down a lot. I always wonder whether its popularity is related to how good it is or to how much people just want to win versus enjoying a tournament. Ever? It brings in the Ws. Oh, no. Oh, it does. I... 
I will not dispute that. That is, it is a powerful deck. It is very frustrating to play against, but it does bring in the Ws. I just always picture this tiny little elf or this tiny little frog thing with like lots of glowy, shiny things on it, just running at someone. Just like the flavor of it <laughs> yeah. is just great. Carrying knives, and whatnot, <laughs> he's like unflinching courage. Yeah, he's he, yeah. So he's carrying some knives. He's got this this glowy hyena around him. He's yep. got some armor. He's got. You're just like, man, what what is that? Whatever a Daybreak Cornetta is wearing that, obviously. Here's a Lightning Bolt. And now we're going to see this in combat because Sue Kinnick has Path Exile. Mm -hmm. Also because he has Crackling Doom, too. Though at this point, won't be able to cast it. Lightning Bolt's going to resolve. There goes the Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah, Aaron's last pump spell is another mutagenic growth, and that won't save it. Does have a copy of Dispel at hand but not really a fight that he, that he can win, and he actually knows that, too. So kind of flooding out a bit here now, I, that's not really going to matter. And this is the difficulty of this matchup for Infect. I think, you know, your traditional Jeskai control decks are among Infect's worst matchups, and Jonathan's deck, at least in this match, is, surpri is very similar to a Jeskai control deck. Yes, very, very much so. There is that light black splash for the Crackling Doom, for the flashback on Lingering Souls and Mystical Teachings. But in reality, he is just kind of a just guy control deck. He's, in a way, free rolling these yeah. lands. His deck has the best removal of the format. Yes. And the way to beat Infect is if you just don't, I mean, it's very similar to the Heroic and Standard. Don't let them untap with the creature if possible. Just yep. kill everything. Breeding Pool going to get searched up here by Barrett off of the Misty Rainforest. Does have a Dried Arbor and a sideboard that he could bring in. It does not look to be the case. Now, the one thing here for Suketic, because it certainly looks like he's on his way to getting into the late game, which is exactly where he wants to be. That's why game one took so long. He's got to find a way to win the game. Time will become an issue here soon, as there's a wind swept you. He does have a copy of Gideon in his main deck, a Restoration Angel, and then four Snapcaster Mages. He's going to do a little bit of math here. He does want to make sure he wins in some amount of time. You see seven minutes remaining in the round. I don't see that being a problem. But he just needs to be aware of it. Yeah. Social Colonnade in play right now, too. That can become an attacker sure, at and, some point. And Aaron won't be able to kill it either. Yeah. Well, with Aaron already dealing himself a decent amount of damage with Rexine Mana Spells and these Fetch Lancers at 13. Maybe he deals himself another one. And then it's a three-turn clock with the Colonnade. But we'll see how aggressive Sukenik wants to get. He's at 19 normal life and then two infect. So he's sitting pretty right now as he searches up a Goblet Shrine. How do you feel about control strategies in this format, like four-color control or like Just Guy? I know you love Amulet Bloom. I know you love combo when you can play yeah, it. Yeah, um, so we, we've seen these do somewhat well. You know, Sean McLaren made the finals of a Pro Tour with a Just Guy control won deck. That, won that Pro Tour. No, sorry, you're right. He won the Pro Tour. Yeah. yeah. He defeated Jacob Wilson in the finals of it. So the deck has ha, does have some results. I think it can be problematic in that it is there. You know, for example, there are a lot of things in the format that are very difficult to control. I'm not always sure you actually have a great black green matchups with these decks. Um, they're they're very good at creating card advantage as well. Um, decks like Tron exist, which is just a horrible matchup for Jeskai. You saw Colony come across there for four points of damage. Barrage down to nine. Lingering Souls the draw here, and this card's incredible against Infect. Yeah. So. I think you can do the strategy. The question is whether or not having more reactive spells is actually better than just trying to turn the corner with something like Twin. You know, if you're going to play just these these blue-red colors, is it is this better than, than just trying to combo people? Sure. Lingering Souls is done resolving four Spirit Tokens have entered the battlefield. Barrage will take a draw step. He's looking for something like a Blighted Agent, but we know that Sukenik has got that covered in many ways. Supreme Verdict is one. Crackling Doom is two. Yeah, and this is the thing. Infect has a lot of moving pieces. It has 13 creatures, 22 spells. If it can't defend its creatures, you can just kill them all, and then his hands stop doing anything. And then that's what we're seeing play out. Sukenik's going to line up the lands here for what looks to be a Celestial Colonnade activation. Just weighing if he wants to get that aggressive right now or maybe wait until the next turn. Still get a health, healthy 19 life and two infect. See how aggressive he does want to get. Just, at this point, I think what Jonathan's thinking about is how can I lose this game? 
you do have a lot of cards in your hand, but is there any weird roundabout way that I can lose? I, I think that answer is no. Doesn't seem likely. Well, it's certainly something to think about. You see the cards in his hand, Supreme Verdict, Crackling Doom, and Path to Exile. And there's no real way for him to finish the game off in one turn. So I think the goal here, if you're getting, is just try to maximize finishing it off in two. So he'll start by attacking for three. Barrett's going to go down to six. When you see the amount of Barrett interaction Barrett has, it it doesn't really matter which route Sukenik takes. You know, whether, as long as he plays defense correctly, which it looks like he's going to, then, then dealing with his remaining six should not be too difficult. There's a blighted agent. A windswept right. teeth and a passing of the turn. We might see that crackling doom now. Right, and that's just it. You know, crackling, it, it can be dispelled, but we see Zekanik's going to do his best to kill this creature. And he's going to lead off with Path to Exile. Barrett's going to sacrifice a windswept teeth. Yeah, Barrett should actually be able to protect this Blighted Agent, but I don't know if he'll be able to survive next turn's attack. Yep. Now here's Crackling Doom. And the more that, the more that Barrett protects this is he'll dispel the Crackling Doom, that just makes it easier for Jonathan to say, all right, untap, activate my Colidate and kill you. Yep, I don't think Barrett has a defense to that. In fact, it's not a deck that plays removal, yep. and it doesn't have flyers outside of Ink Moth, which he doesn't have in play. So Kenneth's going to sacrifice the Arid Mesa to get a land out of his deck here before he takes what will likely be his last turn of the game on his way to victory. Howl of Fountain is the weapon of choice. I know that we do have a deck tack with Jonathan Sukenik as well, so if you haven't been to our coverage page, certainly check that out. We've had a lot of deck techs go up yesterday, and we'll have more for you guys today. A lot of people curious about this four-color control deck and exactly what Sukenik is up to. Remember, again, earlier this year, at our only modern open in Baltimore, he did make the top eight of that with this particular deck. He's getting ready here in just a moment, I believe, to attack for the win. Picked up a copy of Spell Snare. Yeah. I believe he actually has a, I believe the cards actually anticipate in his hand. Some blue cards. Either way, that doesn't change the play. I don't is, think it does either. Which is uh, swing the air in the air. There's a mutagenic. Oh, what a nice guy. Mutagenic growth here, mutagenic growth there. Oh, I put him to one. Oh, he take, does it on his own terms. Pay, pays five, four life, then cracks a fetch. That'll be no damage from Sukenik. Jonathan Sukenik will win this match here over Aaron Barrett. Two games to one. Four color control will take care of Infect. And Sukenik will move on to seven and two with his innovative brew. Something we don't see a lot of, but the Black Splash looking to be pretty useful here.